time to decorate the panther chameleon cage. I have been gathering stuff all week long for this moment and I'm super excited to show you guys how I'm gonna go ahead and decorate my future panther chameleon's cage. Last week when I built the cage, I had put these things, these braces in off camera and I ended up sticking a planter pot with some pothos, um, some organic potting soil mixed with the rest of the stuff that's in here. Dump some springtails in there, put some pothos and some hostas in there. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing to this side as well. Not only will that give uh, a, me a middle ground up for plants to grow to kind of fill in the cage, that'll also just really help prop stuff like sticks and twigs and vines on too as well. You know the staple gun is my best friend and we're gonna be using that here on this thing today. Great, now that that shelf is in, we can go ahead and start filling the soil up in here. Once we get some in here, then we'll transfer it into this pot over here, and that'll just make it easier on us. To start off, we're gonna use the rest of the seed mix that I have. It is organic, no pesticides, no fertilizers, no anything like that. Uh, really just peat moss, um, some dirt, and sand, that's it. It's so soft. Ugh. We'll then take this giant bag of peat moss that I have and fill it up about halfway in this container. We are gonna be making this substrate bioactive and with any bioactive substrate, you don't want to have an overabundance of things that are biodegradable in the cage. You do want a good majority of your soil to be actual dirt. Because if not, it'll just break the, the biodegradables like this peat moss and what's the majority of the, the seed mix is, is uh, biodegradables. It'll break down and pretty much just turn into muck. Uh, just a bunch of um, springtail and isopod poop once, once it's all broken down. So you want to have dirt in there um, for your plants to be able to grow and grab onto that dirt. Nice organic topsoil. Just give it a good massage. We're now gonna be adding a little bit of aspen shavings in here, and that will help uh, further create some air pockets along with some of the different types of mosses that we're gonna be mixing into this soil substrate as well. We're gonna then add a little bit of Spanish moss, which actually isn't a moss at all. It's a type of bromeliad. Again, this will be really helpful in creating some air pockets and preventing uh, methane gas buildup in your soil, which is detrimental, usually. And then we're gonna add a whole bunch of moss in here as well. Again, anything to create air pockets, that's where uh, your isopods will end up burrowing down into. And again, it keeps the buildup from deadly gases in the soil. It's just really nice to have a nice, light, airy soil. We're gonna add some raffia. We're just gonna slice it up a little bit. This raffia will serve as stuff to create more air pockets as well as food for your cleanup crew. And lastly for our soil is a little bit of aquarium sand. Sand is really gonna help our soil drain properly. And that's a nice soil. We won't be adding our springtail culture today because I just got it a couple of days ago and I wanna give it a couple more weeks to go ahead and establish itself before I deplete some of the cleanup crew that is in here because I've got more plans uh, for these springtails. I'm just gonna fill this up with some soil over here. 
and we're gonna put a couple of pastas up here as well as some pathos like we did with the one over here. And we'll also put some pathos here on this side. And now we have a really nice mid-layer for the chameleon to kind of hang out in, uh, as well as the tree that we're gonna be putting in there, which we might as well go ahead and do that. I bought too big of a tree, um, so we're gonna have to do some quick trimming. And I don't really know how to trim a tree, so don't judge me for how scrawny this looks. And I'm sorry, Groot. I don't mean to hurt your family. And that's enough to get it to fit. So let's go ahead and bury it down into the soil. Cool, let's work on planting these hostas down in here. I don't know if I wanna leave them as a clump around the base. Yeah, that's definitely what I wanna do. We'll put them here towards the front and that'll help disguise this tree trunk a little bit. Give it a more seamless appearance. Fantastic. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but this is shaping up to be really cool. And we're not even halfway done with everything that needs to go into it. With the tree and most of the plants added into the cage, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the hardscape, which really I just collected a bunch of sticks from my local park, Westside Park. You guys are familiar with that if you've been on the channel a couple of times before. Uh, it's my favorite park to go to. I collected some sticks these sticks right here to be uh, exact. And I just put them in my shower, rinsed them off, sprayed them with a 10% bleach solution, sprayed them off again, and then let them sit uh, probably in that spot for about a week now. So they're ready to go into the cage. We'll add this big wonky stick first cause like I don't know where it's gonna go now that there's a big ass tree in there. We're gonna have to break it. There we go. Get in the tree. And that'll give our chameleon just a, a nice safe access point, like I said, to get into the tree. Right there. I do plan on making this upper left back corner. Um, his basking area. So I want to create probably three or four different basking branches uh, horizontally in that back corner for him. Big stick, if we can finesse it. And we have Almost. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. Nice big uh, diagonal stick coming in from the ground back up to the canopy. Uh, that'll be a nice area if he does ever get to the ground, which most chameleons don't. Uh, that'll give him a nice transition back up to the back up to the canopy, like I said. We have one last massive stick and I'm gonna try and run this from the bottom left-hand corner up to the top right-hand corner because that corner is looking a little bit bare as of right now. Success. Successfully ran this one all the way up into that top right corner there. 
and that's that's really creating a nice vibe again we're just now about halfway done with the stuff that's going into this chameleon cage because when i get him i want to make sure that he is 100 percent comfortable and doesn't feel that he's out in the open or at risk at all i do have a cat i do have other reptiles and me and my girlfriend are both walking around the apartment all the time and i'd hate for him to feel uncomfortable with any of that commotion that may be going on I've also got these accent sticks, which will kind of help create those basking platforms here on the left side of the cage that I was talking to you guys about. I'm gonna see if I can finagle a way to get these in there and, uh, and look decent. There we go, I like that. I like that a lot. There we go. We've got a nice alleyway up to the basking platforms. The highest one is actually right there. So that's where we'll locate the heat bulb. And then we have one here, one a slightly a little bit lower and one just a little bit lower than that. So we have four basking platforms in this one area of the cage. And let's try and get this one branching off to the right side of the cage, just to kind of fill that area up a little bit more still. There, and I think that looks really good right there on that side as well. Sweet. I'm so stoked on the way that this looks. I don't know about you guys, but there's just so much foliage in here. Again, we're not even done. Let's go ahead and now that all the live plants are in, I did get a number of fake plants. Just because creating a chameleon cage as dense as it needs to be with just live plants is honestly pretty hard. Um, just from all the research I've been doing and watching other people's chameleon videos, it's hard for people to achieve the look that is needed. So I caught a, got a couple of fake vines and yeah, let's do it. These vines are also gonna help the chameleon traverse this entire ecosystem that I'm creating for him. With them being small little thin vines, he'll be able to walk all the way around this like little back alleys through this main highway uh, metropolitan system that I'm creating for him. And looking at it, I just realized that I'm gonna have to trim off probably the front section of this tree. Ah! Yep, that's what I got. Yeah, that's really all that needs to be cut off the front end. I'm sure like every two days or something, the tree will grow and I'll have to cut it again and again and again and again. We may end up switching it out for a better option eventually, but I think it'll all work out for now. Bam, just like that, it is now day two of decorating the chameleon cage. I took a break because there was this big like street festival the next town over with a lot of beer and a lot of good food. And you can't turn those kind of things down. So picking right back up where we left off, uh, we just finished decorating the uh, like greenery part of the cage and I went to the Dollar General and found these cool little like fake flowers so I'm gonna put them in here and give this thing a little bit of color because um, it looks just really green right now let's do it oh no oh, I broke it get back on there little buddy we'll survive
There we go. Now I think that this really adds a nice pop of color throughout the cage and helps break up all of that greenery that's in there. I do have a few more finishing touches that are going to be going into the cage to help add to this nice, lush, jungle aesthetic that we're going for. I'm going to take some of this Spanish moss that we have been uh, adding into the soil over here and I'm going to use it to drape over a lot of these sticks and twigs and stuff. And I'm just like throwing it in there and seeing what it grabs onto. I think that's kind of going to help it look a little bit more natural maybe. And we're going to take the raffia that I have still and do pretty much the same thing with it. This is a whole bundle and it'll go out to like, I don't know, freaking 10 feet long or some shit. green moss up into here as well to kind of give everything a little bit more of a bushy feeling. This will help create some of the humidity pockets in this enclosure that chameleons desperately need. They don't need the entire cage being super humid, but they do need very particular humidity pockets so they can, uh, you know, get in and out of the gradient of humidity. Last thing that we need to do is create the chameleon's feeding dish. I'm going to do a little hanging feeding dish. I have a ball jar with a handle on it and a nice rope and I'm going to tie it off around here at kind of an angle so the crickets can't climb up the glass and then hang it from the top around a perching branch that the chameleon can easily access this. I think we're going to hang it on this side anyways, about right here in this area. So that means we'll need to fish through uh, around probably one of these two braces here and and get this thing hung up. Or we might just do some staples. I love staples. Now that we got the feeding jar in, I do have a few other little twigs that I want to add in here to create some pathways to things like the feeding jar, some pathways up to the basket spot, some pathways over to the um, planter boxes here, which will be kind of the humidity pockets in this cage. And I think that we will wrap it up after that. And there it is. It's just a huge bush of networks and coverage and gradients. And that's what you want to achieve when you build a chameleon cage. I've got my hot spot area over here, even with gradients inside of that, the highest peak is either this guy right there in the very back or this guy right here. And then it comes down to an even lower branch and a lower branch and a lower branch. And when I get the actual heat light on there, I'll be able to show you guys numbers of how it dissipates down. Um, basically, it wants to come to low 90s uh, all the way down and just give them options. Um, I'm gonna be having humidity pockets in here with the two flower pots and the planter box. So lower down towards the cage, it'll be a little bit more humid for him. You also have coverage gradients where, um, you know, in the tree, he's gonna be feel really covered. Even if he's down here, he's gonna feel covered. Back there in the corner is a little bit more open if he's feeling like he wants to get exposed. And up there in the, the basking area is a little bit more exposed as well. Um, UVB lighting, I'll be using a linear T8 um, to provide him his UVB. So anywhere near the top of the cage, whether he's on the right side of the exposure, the left side of the exposure, or if he's at the very top of the bush here, he'll get good UVB exposure. And then of course, as he travels farther and farther down the cage, 
less and less UVB exposure. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I built uh, this cage and decorated it in the course of about two weeks. I know I still don't have a front door to it, um, but that's boring and I figured you guys wouldn't wanna watch me just build another panel and put a screen or a plexiglass on it. So I'll make some updates on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, at Terrell underscore Cameron, I'll leave the links in the description like I always do, and you can check it out over there. Uh, another thing that we need to get is a misting system. I'm torn between going with the Mist King uh, or the Repti Rain. I would ideally like the Mist King, but money and I'm only watering one cage uh, with with that needs that kind of uh, watery, watering delivery system. So I'm thinking about going with ZooMed's Repti Rain. I do really like the reviews that are on it and I would choose that one over the Monsoon system. Um, just personally so I think I am going to be going with the Repti Rain and seeing how it works and if it doesn't work out for what I'm trying to do with it then I will sell that and get the Mist King system let's see I still need to get my mini deep dome to put my 50 or 60 watt bulb up top to create my basking spot and I also need to get a 36 inch fixture to put my linear T8 UVB bulb in and after that we'll be ready we'll be ready to get the chameleon so make sure you guys stay tuned like this video if you liked it because you know i need those kind of things hit the subscribe button and i don't usually ask that but just go ahead and do it because if not you're going to miss out when i actually do get the panther chameleon again follow me on the social medias links in the description thank you guys so much and have a good rest of your week